Uh, hey YouTube, my name is Sidekick Killer. Uh, I'm doing uh, Act 5 Qualification VOD. This is going to be Act 5 Katava. We're doing all the skill points as well as Normal Lab. We're going to be going with a Witch. We're going to go Orb Storm, Storm Must Mine early into Armageddon Brand Flame Wall. One thing to note is that you will have to migrate all as soon as you start the character. And then after that, it doesn't really matter as long as uh, you know, you're not cheating in some way, shape, or form. Uh, we make the Witch first just because. Save us a logout, you're allowed to skip tutorials, move your flasks, as long as you don't make any movements, then you're good to go. The reason why we do this is because the timer doesn't start until you move, and technically we haven't moved yet. It's pretty common standard in racing, so we're going to go in 3, 2, 1, go. What we could have done earlier, but I tend to wait until I'm on the beach, is just type in magic, just to make sure that I've got that on my copy paste. I don't have some copy pasta from chat, copy pasted. This way I can make sure that I've got magic. We do this so we can look for a magic wand. We're looking for blue blue blue, blue blue green, or just something like less of that. We've got a lot of scrolls of wisdoms to work with, and not many transmutes or alterations early on. We would really like to have one by like the level 8 mark, or after Brutus. What build are we going this one? Yeah, we're playing the Armageddon brand cremation build, or like, with like Desecrate and hopefully Harrowed of Ash. Uh, this is probably the fastest build in the game. I say probably because there's probably a few things that are untested. There hasn't really been any like super stressful Act 5 races. But with the Havoc Blitz race coming up, I could see potentially maybe some new strat emerging. But this just seems like the best build for all intents and purposes. Not sure what we play if this got nerfed. Here we pick up all the magic and rare items, take off the weapon, take off the flasks. We're going to Lionize, use our Logo macro, and talk to Tarkley. We're going to look for NN for movement speed right after looking for our colors. So we just Vendor Walk, take the red gem, looking for our colors. I see a blue green. I might have actually have taken that. Um, so I see a blue, a blue, so I'll take that. Goodbye. And I probably should have bought Storm Blast Flame, but it's fine. And then we log on over to the Witch. The Silence Balance is broken again. Oh no. I'll fix that in a second here. Dead will soon rise for me, not okay. against me. Okay, sorry about that. I had to uh, unplug my mic and then plug it back in. Should be good. Into DD? No, no, no. We just play Armor Brand Cremation. It's just an Act 5 run. Uh, the only thing that's weird about the all passive, all skill points, or whatever, uh, plus normal lab run is that it seems very league start viable, but the only issue I have with it is it doesn't require XP. Typically, by doing all the skill points and stuff, you're pretty good on XP, but we don't farm chamber innocence like I would on a league start. But there's also no way to like require, like, you have to be this level by this point. Two different blue greens, it's very nice. I don't actually know if I entered the place, that would be very awkward. Okay, well that's a reset right there. I accidentally logged out 0.1 seconds too early. So now I have to get it now I have to do the whole thing over again. God damn it. Alright. Alright. Take number two. Uh, hey YouTube, this is Tidek Killer. We're going to be doing uh, an Act 5 all skill points plus lab run. Rebreak the microphone? That's fine. The very sand. Uh, we can actually make movements before the timer, or we can't make movements before the timer starts, so the timer will start once we make any sort of movement at all on our character. And you have to show that you're migrating all, otherwise the run won't be validated because you could technically cheat. If you, you know, had stash stuff in like stash number 18 or something like that. Something weird. Um, but yeah, we're going to be playing the Orba Storm, Storm Must Mind Witch, into Armageddon Brand uh, Cremation. It's just one of the best racing builds in the game at the moment. And definitely one of the strongest builds for Act 5. You could go with some, what is that? You could go with some meme stuff for the qualification. Uh, but that is assuming that you feel pretty confident in your submission. I want to get submitted as soon as possible, as well as showing you guys how to get submitted for the Act 5, um, or sorry, the Havoc Blitz race season. 
because I do think that uh, a lot of people can qualify that don't feel very confident in it. And I believe that watching someone do it makes it a lot easier. So I'm going to show my thought process and what I'm doing at pretty much all points. Might start memeing around like Act 3, Act 4 though. <clears throat> Here with Hillock, we have to auto attack him when he's around 50%, like transforming, otherwise we'll run into mana. Um, now we take off everything. We're just going to pick up all the magic and rare items. The Iron Ring is really good because it allows us to get a gem or a resist ring. So we're going to grab the red gem, we're going to look for our colors. We're going to type in NN. If we don't find anything, we're looking for blue, 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 blue green, or green and blue. Um, and then we copy paste in magic. Uh, I kind of like that, but not enough. I might see what I can get instead. And the other vendor. And so we're looking pretty good right now. I might regret not grabbing that magic wand. I forgot to mention that we should have magic on the copy paste, but that's too hard to just type out. And then copy that and then paste it into the vendor. We do that because we want a magic wand for the vendor craft at level 8. If you can't get it at level 8, then you just do it after Brutus and it's fine. But it allows us a lot more flexibility on currency because we need one less transmute. On top of that, uh, you can take the 10 decks in a strength node if you don't get any source of dexterity. That way you can equip smoke mine. Um, this means that instead of needing three transmutes at level 10, we only need one. <clears throat> Where can you find the Armageddon brand cremation build? I believe Havoc did a build guide on it, and I think Dampen did a run on it as well. I did a run on it, but I wasn't very happy with the time, so I didn't turn it in anywhere on YouTube or anything. So again, we're going to grab that unlinked blue-green-red wand. We're also going to grab... Uh, any sort of magic or rare items. Got a blue 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 wand. I believe I need blue blue green of some kind. I, I have it on the chest piece, but I'd like it on the wand if I can. Uh, this isn't a magic wand, but that's still fine. So I just need an extra transmute. We're gonna grab freezing pulse. Look for colors. I see a green green blue. Look for movement speed by typing in NN. I will hold on to this chest piece for far later in the run, but I'm not gonna use it right now. Right now we're gonna go freezing pulse, arcane surge. And onslaught, and we're gonna move a bunch of stuff over. Let's see, okay, it's gonna be south. Special throw. You can do either the cold craft or lightning craft, it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna hold on to that. We're gonna drop this, hold on to you, and I'll move this into my gloves. So, with the uh, blue blue green, you're gonna go frost bomb, uh, and then you can either go added lightning in the onslaught, or you can go frost bomb. And you can either put Orbstorms or Frost Blink in this blue socket. I usually opt for Frost Blink because I find the Frost Blink kills a lot of mobs early. Just on attack moving, and then Onslaught. And then over here, we're going to have Arcane Surge and whatever else you didn't put in this blue blue green. For the green green blue, we're going to put in Stormblast Mine, Lesser Poison, and Swift Assembly. So we need at least two Scrolls of Wisdoms so when we go back to town after doing uh, Tidal Island. This is so we can get uh, both Swift Assembly and either Frost Bomb or Orbstorms. I prefer to buy Frost Bomb. Here at Mudflats, these little things are usually in a triangle formation. There's one formation where they're in a line, but that one's uh, a little bit more obvious. Oh, careful. An alteration already dropped, so now all I need are transmutes. This is really, really good because it means that we don't have to identify many items. I'm going to take this for a chrome. I've already got good gloves, so I don't need anything else. But yes, the alteration feels very, very good because we are basically set up to do the... The Wandcraft are level 8, the only thing we need to guarantee is a couple transmutes, which shouldn't be too hard to get, considering how many like rare items we've got in our inventory at the moment. Move this over. There we go. Change that instead. Why do we use Lesser Poison? It's just because it's an extra socket, or an extra gem that we can use. If you find a second Blue Blue Green though, then you can go Stormless Mine, Added Lightning, and Swift Assembly, which is a better setup by like a very long shot. Um, the Lesser Poison is only really useful for, like, Brutus and a little bit of Merville. <clears throat> How does typing in NN find movement speed? It's because the boots you find, or the items you find from the vendor, are magic. And so they're gonna have, like, you know like, a Quicksilver Flask of Adrenaline as the suffix of Adrenaline? So you can technically type in, like, Adrenaline if you were on, like, you know, some sort of search page. Well, we can do the same with vendors. So we can search NN, which looks for runners. And runners are the only type of uh, boots you can find this early on because they're 10% MS boots. You can't find 15% MS boots until like Mervale, around Mervale. 
Take an extra green gem. And we're good to go. Nice name, thank you. The time's not very amazing, but I'm not going for time here. So we grab the Quicksilver, we grab Lesser Poison. We can also sell these Life Flasks for 3 to 1, and then I'll upgrade the Flask. Uh, if that's a magic one, I'll take it. Otherwise, we're going to have Switch Assembly, we're going to grab Frost Bomb, Orb of Storms, Frost Blink. I'll look for colors one last time, look for NN. I'm finding, that's fine though. Uh, in a non-skill point run, you can actually just sell this portal, but we can't do that here because we need it. Um, I actually really want this essence, unfortunately, because I'm missing a lot of my level 4 gems, and my damage is going to be pretty awful, so I have to like, I'll probably just come back for it later actually. Uh, this layout doesn't look like it approves of me coming back to this later, anyways we'll go ahead and swap here. Yeah, this layout does not approve of me coming back later. Unfortunate. That's fine though. I could place that portal sooner. That's okay. Put our surge over here, along with the Orb of Storms, and we're good to go. The thing we need now is a passive point. I think this right Power rings actually aren't too bad early on, to be honest. Whoever threw together the promo video for the Havoc Blitz race, it crushed it? Yeah, I agree. It was really good. Uh, I dropped the small light flask here because I just don't need it for the most part. And if I find like a large light flask, it'll automatically equip it. But we shouldn't really need like anything small like that because we shouldn't actually be using all of our medium light flask charges in the first place. Here I go for like large packs of monsters. Usually the magic packs are a stop. So I'll usually start for those, but like huge packs like this I'll start for. Uh, I'm not going to start for that because even though it's a magic pack, uh, there's like not enough near it and those mobs have a lot of HP. So I'm not going to bother, level up our gems here. The Skeleton Archers would actually be a good type of mob to fight, so that's a nice consideration. We're opening up chests along the way just to look for miscellaneous things here and there. Um, so for Mervale, you either need two small manas or like one large life flask or one large mana flask so we can actually drop the other small mana because we won't need it four flash strat well technically right now we're doing the the two flash or the three flash strat which doesn't really matter but it just saves us space essentially if we pick up a life flask it will automatically slot onto slot number one and we don't need a second mana flask because at this moment in time Life flask. Oh, there's a large life flask. Go back to that really quick. Wisdom. And now I actually don't need a uh, anything else. This 2B1G doesn't require uh, an ID scroll, and we're not going to equip it right now because I don't need it right this second. I've been waiting for you. I will equip this like probably way later on though, and that will allow me to use uh, some better links. The reason why I didn't ID the other chest piece is because it probably won't have good stats on it, and wisdom scrolls are very valuable early on. So here I'm going to go back to town, we go through the portal that we placed. I'm actually considering going and killing that essence really quick. It might take like a 15 second detour, but I think that it'll be worth it just because of the fact that we need two essences in the run. This is not something I would do for like any sort of like world record attempt or anything like that, but I would definitely do this for like uh, consistency. And like I said earlier, my damage earlier was like really bad. I could have definitely have stopped for that. I just thought that the uh, the Dweller would be a bit closer, so I'd be able to fight that. It's fine though, we ended up getting a lot of rare items, which gets us closer to our Transmute goal. Transmute goal should be easy to reach because Brutus typically drops a lot of items. In Flooded, you're usually going to one of the four corners, and obviously it can't be in the corner that you're in. Another alteration, that's pretty sick. That's what we like to see. I'm going to put this into my offhand. Uh, probably just get rid of these for the most part and so it looks like this one's in the top right corner so I'm gonna go over there so yeah, I'm pretty sure that I can get my wand craft off here so I'm gonna have to be pretty quick about taking my gems off unfortunately I wasn't able to get developed sooner Chance. that's fine chance sword that's good because we're gonna need that for act 10 or not act 10 sorry for act 3 for a level 28 gem okay. Here we take added lightning, we're gonna go ahead and sell this garbage. I might ID the boots, looking for movement speed, I didn't find it, but they're better than nothing. I'm just gonna take the blue blue blue, plus slots, transmute it, 
take one of the ults, Topaz ring, and we get a wand with some extra damage on it. I've already got both ones I need, we take our skill point. I'm gonna look for colors one last time. I found a nice pair of boots, but I'm not gonna use those. Just in case I find movement speed, because it's not too mandatory. At this point, there's a variety of different setups you can use. So you can use Frost Bomb at a Lightning Onslaught. I find that the damage is a little bit overkill. When you've got... Um, I need that helmet, by the way, because I need a green socket for Smoke Mine very soon. But I find that the damage on Frost Bomb is pretty overkill, because we have the wand craft already. Your bears give more uh, transmutes than magic items do. Yes, they do. So here we're going to go this way. Grab the trial really quick. Level 9 already, which is a little bit over what we need to do. Boop. Armor scrap, and you can see that like Frostmoon is just kind of like farming mobs. But for magic back here and there, I'm um, going the wrong way. I do need a few wisdoms, but because we ended up dropping two alterations, I shouldn't really need them. I might actually be going the wrong way, but I'm just gonna follow my gut. Okay, my gut was right. Saved. Boop. Yeah, you can see that Frostblink actually does farm quite a lot of monsters. So long as you use it on actual mobs. And I find that it steals a lot of onslaught kills early on, so that's why I like to equip it. We're actually definitely going to be level 10 by the time that we're on Brutus. Which is kind of nice, because we get to instantly equip uh, our Smoke Mine Flame Dash combo. That's really nice, going through like Prisoners, Ship Graveyard. We don't need every Wisdom, so I don't want to backtrack for all of them. Uh, if it's not in this top right corner, then I think it's going to be in the middle over this way. There it is. Go back for another portal or two though. I might end up needing those. So we only need seven transmute shards, which makes me feel pretty comfy because Brutus tends to drop a lot of magic rare items. So I might actually equip this chest piece just for the boss fight. I'm gonna grab Lightning Walker. I'm probably gonna grab this 10 dex node unless I've got dexterity somewhere. Doesn't look like I do. So I'm gonna grab the 10 dex node. We're gonna go over to Elements Overload now. What level do I shoot for for Brutus? Around level 9. You want level 9 or level 8? This gets you a Lightning Walker, but we do Dweller, so you get an extra skill point, so it doesn't really matter. The only reason I'm equipping this for the fight, I mean obviously the stats, but also you get a very nice amount of space in your inventory. That 3B wand is magic already. I'm kind of sad about that, because I already used my transmute on that. But that's alright. I guess I can save it for later if I wanted to. We can ID the boots. Looking for movement speed, we found movement speed and a green socket. I ended up selling most of this, and like I said, I just need a transmute, so I'm gonna get smoke mine here, Farewell. grab flame dash, and yeah, I'm not gonna use this wand. At this point, I replace the frost blink. I'm gonna use added lightning, with the chest piece, and we put on smoke mine, as well as flame dash in the arcane surge setup. You could do like some weird other setups if you'd like, but this is. What I found to be enjoyable, for me at least. You can also use Orba Storms with Frost Bomb and Onslaught, but I find that Frost Bomb tends to miss a few kills every now and again, especially on like the tankier packs. But it would be nice because that would have definitely popped Onslaught right there. The small node gives 10 decks. Yeah, that one was, uh, I stole that one from Exile a long time ago. Level 11. Every time you level up your flash recharge, here we need the waypoint. But every time you level up your flash recharge, and so we want to time using our flask before we level up. Here, the way that we look for ship graveyard is we don't follow the the like edges of the zone because it has to be connected to the cave has to be connected to an actual ship itself. Therefore, we know that it's probably not going to be like along one of these like edges, edge case scenarios. So instead, just run around. Uh, might actually not be this way. Gem cutters. I don't think any gem would matter at this point. Don't need the large life plus because we've already got some stuff. That's a green and blue. That isn't showing in the filter for some reason. The reason why I'm picking this up is because it gives us more socket flexibility, as I like to call it. Um, essentially, if we find the world's best gloves, I can't replace those gloves or these gloves because I need the colors in in the these gloves. However, with this helmet, it allows me to replace the gloves if I need to. What? Whetstone's really cool. We can sell whetstones for four scrolls of wisdoms. So we've already got the waypoint. We've got our little all flame. We're going to go to the Cavern of Wrath. We're going to take this portal, this waypoint, back to the last waypoint. This way we don't have to backtrack. And we're going to go kill Fairgraves. Fairgraves used to be pretty close to the waypoint. Not too difficult to find them most of the time. 
See, these are just travel nodes, so it's like 10 strength, 10 intelligence, so that's why I didn't put them in as soon as I leveled up. So the whetstone, I'll probably sell the armor scrap later on. I don't think I'll do that right this second. If I can find an iron ring, I might grab that in town, just because I want to prepare getting a ruby ring for Act 2. Oh my. Okay, well we just dropped, uh, there was a lot to digest there. There's a Quicksilver. Alright, so first of all we get our skill point. Oop, yep. Uh, we don't need any of these gems actually, at level 10, or level 12. Fuck community. Uh, I might use that helmet actually. And I will send all the armor scrap. And we've already got basically a lot of colors. Let's go ahead and use an augmentation if we have one on this flask. We don't, that would make it have a prefix. Oop. I think we're just pathing over to Elemental Overload. Technically, if you didn't have to take the 10 dex node and you like skip something else, like I don't know, Lightning Walker, you could have EO, which might be a better strat at this point, but I find that it's unnecessary to have EO from Reveal. Especially if you have like Wandcraft and you've got. I should be able to skip over this, I think. I guess I'm not able to. I'm just not good enough at the game. I guess it was over here, anyways. Make sure these are on attack of them moving. It makes their functionality a little weird if they're not, because they don't reach their full duration, or their full extended reach range, that's the word I'm looking for. I'll show you guys a trick on strong boxes later, when I need more XP. Right now, you only really need like level 11 or level 12 on Merville. I'm going to end this fight at like well over 13, so I definitely don't need this. A little shrine here, it's going to help out with damage. But yeah, on... Uh, it actually would be better to go blue blue green here and use added lightning in the storm blast mine setup but it's fine it would take too long to switch over so i'm not going to bother doing that here we set up a lot of mines and then we detonate them just once that's because you want the sequence to go on as long as possible uh, i could see myself switching here actually switch assembly added lightning we're losing smoke mine for a few seconds whoa careful buddy Rebel can be a little tricky. The ads are actually kind of scary. So I definitely want to watch out for those. It's harder to get a long uh, detonation sequence on Mervel Phase 2 just because of the fact that she has all these things that can actually kill your mines. So it hurts your gains. If you know, then you know. But yeah, we don't actually need a better life flask at this point, so we're fine. Hi, Chip. Bye, Chip. Nice talking to you. So at this point, we can remove the lesser poison. I'm gonna go Orb of Storms over here. That's no, not Orb of Storms, that's Flame Dish. We can actually skip over Den. Actually skip over the Den. Because we've already dropped a Quicksilver, so we don't need that. An Iron Ring. Oh yeah, that's what I was supposed to look for. I was supposed to look for an Iron Ring. Oh well, we need to find one, so it's fine. Orb of Storms over here. And there we go. That's the optimal setup. Uh, we do need a couple alterations, but we also need a couple of transmutes, so it doesn't really matter what we do with these. Uh, we can get rid of the chest piece, because we've already got a blue-blue-green. I'm gonna get rid of this. It's a consideration to keep the blue-blue-blue helmet, I believe. Alright, so here's the strong box tech. You click the strong box, then you use a movement skill away. I prefer uh, Flame Dash, but you can detonate your smoke mine. Uh, we've already got two essences, so I don't need this essence. We only need two for the wand crafts. Again, you would find the den, you would place a portal for it, and then you would come back to it once you get this waypoint. However, we've already dropped a Quicksilver, so we don't need to, to do that. <clears throat> the reason why you do den is so you can get a Quicksilver. Also, we have EO because we get all of our passive points, and it feels really, really good to do that. Because you are wicked strong. You're level 14, which is perfect on XP. We're gonna want to be like level 15 by the time we're like killing Fidelitas, so we're 15 in Chambers 1, then we've got a lot of XP. If you're like barely 13 or like level 12, each one of these little side shoots will have a magic pack, so you'll want to do one of those, and the waypoint will always point in the direction that you want to enter Chambers us into. Ever go for survival instincts? Not really. If you can't talk to Einar, that's probably what I should have done, but oh well. I'll just get this beast kind of low, and he'll join us anyways. And that'll give us some XP as well. Let's see if he drops us any rare items. We need rare items because we need uh, some alterations here. So we're going to start IDing some rares. If it's a 6 mod item, then it's going to actually sell for an augmentation, which we're not too happy about, but it's fine. 
I would take those, but I've already got movement speed, so I don't need them. We've also got a red gem, which is kind of important because it means that we can take Herald of Ash. If you don't have Herald of Ash, you can just take a Herald of Thunder, and that's okay, but not ideal. So that's not what I like to see. You can definitely take that if need be. Sell this, get rid of this. And basically, I just want my inventory to be as neat as humanly possible so that items can slot into my inventory very nicely. Because we're, we're gonna need a lot of inventory space for like Weaver and stuff. We've already got a an alteration for Skitterbots, so we're gonna grab Skitterbots here. And we're also gonna grab Herald of Ash from the reward. And luckily, we've got enough blue sockets, just or enough sockets for everything. So we're gonna grab Skitterbots, grab Herald of Ash, and we can vendor walk this. I probably should have sold that for. I should, probably should have ID'd the gloves so I can get more alteration shards. I think about Bleed Bow Gladiator. Um, it's one of the better starters in the game. I put it in like A tier. It's not like the best start in the world, but it's a pretty fun build, especially once you have the Bleed Bow. You start to run into some issues with like damage in higher tier stuff, though. But once you have the Bleed Bow, you're pretty much chilling. We put on our Herald of Ash, put on our Skitterbots. Now we could have actually reset the zone, which I probably should have done because we had a fast waypoint there. Essentially what you're doing is if you are level 16 at this point, which is pretty overleveled, we want to be 16 like on Weaver. It's just a side effect of 3D. doing skill points and stuff, you end up with a lot of XP. But yeah, if you're 16 like early, also, Weaver's always going to be on the opposite side of the road of the waypoint, so like you can see the waypoints on the right hand side of the road, which means that Weaver will definitely be on the left hand side of the road, and you can tell because there's spider webs everywhere. But if you are already like 16, like, or like very close to 16, like in whatever this place is called, the Riverways, you can actually reset from the waypoint if you find the waypoint really fast to try and find a zone where the waypoint is very close to the exit. So essentially, you can skip like half the zone just doing that. I didn't do that because I was mid-explanation, but that's fine. We're going to essence this ruby ring, just because we're going to need two ruby rings for level 28. Here we place down our 15 mines. I, need more mine. I, don't, I actually don't have enough mana to, to detonate. Oh my. Or to use another ability. So that's a ruby ring. So we're going to want to use our other essence on this. We actually ended up with two really good rings here, unfortunately. I actually would really like to wear these rings for the whole run. But we need this for the, the wand crafts pretty soon. Uh, speaking of which, I'm going to go ahead and transmute this blue blue green. Just see if it can land anything. At this point, we're going to start to set up down our mines for when Weaver comes down, just like that. Grab the two stone, grab the greater life, and we're going to grab some magic items because we're going to need a lot of money eventually. Alright, first of all, we're going to go to Western Forest. I like to help Kraytlin because it gives us a little bit of extra speed. So if you want to be safer, you should definitely help Alira. Because Alira will give you 15% all res. If you like a little bit more damage, you should kill all of them. And it won't make too much of a difference on time. But I like to go Kraytlin because it gives us some more violence, some more speed, some momentum. Another transmute, that's beautiful. We need just a couple of those, and we need a lot more alterations. So I'm going to eat that rare item. Uh, we're going to use this level 12 Life Flask instead. And I could Force Flask the strat this actually, if I wanted to. Maybe later on. Does Herald of Ash actually do anything for my current setup? Uh, it kind of sort of helps with like some kills, but not too much. It basically just saves us an alteration because we would have to buy Herald of Ash later, and alterations are really hard to come by in this run. At this point, I would like to go back to Act 1 to grab my skill point stuff. I'm also hoping that I can get up to another transmute. Alright, beautiful. We're actually log out because it's closer. It puts us into the middle of town. We're gonna grab our skill point, we've got our two transmutes and a scroll of wisdom, so we're gonna grab combustion, lesser multiple projectiles, as well as flame wall. And I think I forgot combustion. There we go. We level up combustion or flame wall in the offhand because it actually gains a lot of damage as it levels. Right, we've got everything there. We're gonna go kill oak now. Uh, if I don't have the two transmutes for that, I might delay it, but then it means that uh you get this node later. These two nodes are actually better than Dark Arts because they reduce the cooldown of your movement abilities, which is really, really important. <laughs> helping Kraylin? I mean, helping Kraylin sounds very YOLO until you remember that we do all the skill points and we're pretty good on XP. So that actually feels really comfy. Remember, you can do this run as many times as it takes to get under your uh, two-hour submission. 
Here for Oak, we place down a bunch of mines, then we place down Orbital Storms, and then we place down Smoke Mine. The reason why we place down Smoke Mine is because you can actually destroy a handful of your mines. Let's go ahead and take care of this magic pack, just because it's looking at me kind of funny. And then because I've already got all my like Dark Art nodes that are really important, I'm going to go help Kraylin, and then I, right after that I'm going to go do the Trial. We wait to do the Trial in the Crypt, you know, the one right before the Golden Hand. We wait to do that one until we have our movement like passives. So on Ranger this looks a little different, on uh, like Templar it would be a bit different. But the general principle is that you want to wait until you're, you've got like whatever speed boost you can get your hands on. Here I do actually want to kill a few of these because I want to get uh, Dark Arts to run over there. And now we can do one of two strategies. We can get the extra 4% movement speed here from Dark Arts or we can just rush to the Templar region and be a bit safer. We're going to help Kraylin. This gives us a bit of movement speed, a bit of cast speed. Got Dark Arts already. We made sure that after we were in the Act 1 town, we went back to the Act 2 town. Otherwise, if you log out and then log back in, it will log you back into the last town you were in. So you'll notice that I was in the Act 1 town buying Combustion, Lesser Multiple Projectiles, and Flame Wall. If I never entered the Act 2 town again, then I would actually uh, log out there on Cradlin, and I would be back in the Act 1 town. Best as Act 1 is 45 minutes, nothing wrong with that. We all start somewhere, right? Helping Cradlin, Yeah, helping Cradlin gives us movement speed. The only other option, really, is to help Alira if you want to be safe. And I guess if you wanted more damages, you could kill all of them. Which would allow you to get these 4% uh, movement speed nodes. But these nodes were actually nerfed by like 1% movement speed each. And so they're slightly less valuable. If you wanted to be safe, you know, the extra 4% movement speed won't really help. But we're going to basically take all the movement speed we can get. Just to help speed up the run quite a bit. Essentially, we kind of play around just being... Uh, like very fast and not getting hit more so than setting up our character with a lot of defensives and if you'd like to do resist crafts you can but the transmutes are a little bit tight especially since we have to go back to act one and buy those gems so finishing act two we've got everything done we just have to go kill Vol oversoul now the only issue is that we need two rare ruby rings which we have two magic wands which we have hopefully with ideal colors and then we need two alterations, so I believe I only have one, so I'm going to identify every rare item I find. Ready. I would have also loved to have you to kept that uh, that two stone ring from earlier. However, uh, it was magic and I needed it to get to my transmute, so I sold it. Um, we could kill this yellow beast, but I'm going to pass. Einar's not too important. Einar also helps, also steals a lot of kills. Um, I only really like to help out Einar if... Um, there's like a boss in the zone. Well, I guess Einhardt's just coming along for the ride because he's here now. Level 19, this is a bit over what I need. You basically just need 19 and like... I don't know, the transmute. But you basically just need um, level 19 in Northern Forest. So getting it at this point is kind of over what I need. It's definitely over what I need. But that tends to happen in these 100% uh, runs. So since I found that, I think I'm just going to go up this way. And it should be over here, I think. At this point, also, we can drop the the um, the Frost Bomb, because we don't really need Frost Bomb anymore, so we'll opt to go add a Lightning, and this makes Orbital Storms even stronger. What's the secret to the big gameplay? There's another word there, but I'm not going to say that out loud. Uh, just don't stop moving, basically. You'll notice that like my time in town is basically zero and the amount of downtime I have is very low. Now I'm not a very uh I'm not like a perfect player or anything. I'm like good relative to most players, but I don't think I'm anywhere near perfection. So there's a lot of moments where I'm like, yo, downtime will chaos kind of thing. These past few weeks have been really good for community events and challenges. Yeah, I agree. I think that the uh the Zizarin Gauntlet was really cool. I think that um, the League Start thing was really cool. The Zizarin thing as well. Um, and the Gauntlet, or the uh, the Havoc Blitz race is going to be uh, really awesome as well. Um, I'm hoping the submission can help people out. And if people aren't going to try to submit times, then hopefully they can learn something by watching the run. So, like I said, I'm going for Speed Violence Momentum, so I'm going to take the movement speed here. And we're just going to go for this maximum speed. I usually skip these, like, bear packs, because they're 
pretty large and we hopefully don't need them. I'm also going to take this waypoint just in case. I've had quite a few races where I like disconnected at this point and then I had to walk all the way back from like wetlands and that like cost me the race. We have a false side area that makes me feel a little uneasy. I don't like false side areas in my zones because they change the layout usually into like some weird thing. They contort them. Sometimes they don't do anything and sometimes they really mess with the zone. Okay, so it looks like I didn't really do anything to this zone. I'm also going to take this normal uh, Quicksilver Flask and I'm going to put a transmute on it. We're kind of hoping for a prefix for like, you know, increased charge recovery or like increased uh, flash charges, which would help every time we refill it in like town and stuff. But I guess having resist is pretty cool, so I'll take it. It will make us a bit tankier. Level 21 here, which is a little bit over what we need. I actually might need another item. No, this should get me to my second alteration. I'm hopeful. We don't do the wand crafts right at level 20 because we have a lot of time on Vol Oversoul to start messing around with our inventory. Oh, Alright, this should be perfect. Even if they're like 15 MS, we can just sell our current boots. So these are 10% MS. Oh, they're 15 MS actually. And they've got a red socket. Okay. We actually have all the time in the world to mess around with our inventory, you know, because we can like graduate from college, we can, you know, get married, settle down, have a family, and Vol Oversoul will still be rising up while we're putting all this stuff in. I'm going to take Ellie Focus and put it on the Stormblast Mine setup. We're going to sell this stuff. We actually got to three alterations. That's pretty cool. And at this point, we're going to sell the two rare ruby rings, two alterations, and two wands. And we get some level 20 wands. Uh, I'm going to see if I can get... Uh, oh, I don't want to buy that. That's a rare item. All right, I'm going to grab uh, Wave of Conviction as well, because we're going to need that for some extra dams. Flame Dash, Arcane Surge. So Orbstorms, Added Lighting, Onslaught as well as putting in Wave of Conviction onto Flame Dash on Arcane Surge. Here we stack up 15 mines, and then we Flame Dash over to proc Arcane Surge, hopefully. I oh, I didn't, I didn't Wave of Conviction. No, I didn't Wave of Conviction, I was out of mana. Shame. At this point, I would love to have a level 15 mana flask, but it's fine. And he should die right here. I feel like I could have done more damage, but it's fine. And that was a 33 minute ball, everything done, explained, and the coolest thing is that our XP is actually really, really high. So I shouldn't have any issues in Act 3, shouldn't have any issues in Act 4, and then Act 5 might be the only issue, but even then we should be really strong because we'll be ascended. Uh, I'm going to take this even though I'm not going to equip it, just because I want something to sell for chromatics. At this point I'm looking for resist rings, I'm dying for resist rings, especially because we helped Kratlin. And we don't have any resists. On top of that, we're looking for like a leather belt, so I might buy one of those from the vendor. And then we get an amulet for free. And you can see my resists are like really, really low. But as the uh, saying goes, just don't get hit. Look at the damage. Yeah. We're essentially using our damage as our form of survivability as we are going to kill everything before it kills us, hopefully. Again, this next passive point is just a travel node, so I don't need to put it in. I will actually stop for these gem cutters after like level 18. We're looking for a cheater gem cutters. Um, so like if I needed like a Herald of Ash or something, I didn't have a red circuit earlier and I need a Herald of Ash, I could drop it from there. If I needed control destruction, I could possibly drop it from there. You know, you get the idea. Like after like 16 or 18, you can start doing gem cutters and hope for an extra support gem. It's not always common. It's definitely not guaranteed as you just saw, but every now and again, I'll save myself an alteration, which might actually save the run. Congrats, Pinky. Chips on PC, nice. When you build something like this, Here we're looking for the trial. I would like to showcase the soft course strat. The soft course strat, if you don't know, is that you place a portal for the sewers and then you uh, kill Piety in here in crematorium. Then you die intentionally after grabbing the lab trial. However, that's uh, not very viable in hardcore. Uh, remember, our resists are like zero for fire. So if we get cursed, especially if we get cursed, we are going to die basically instantly over these things. We have to be extremely careful at this point. And I would love to grab some resists on items. A little bit more scrolls. I'll need some scrolls because I want to buy a bunch of stuff from the vendor. I normally don't have to buy like the two stones and stuff, but I guess this runs a little bit different. This is not a travel mode. This is, is actually something. My work in progress. Let's see if Rayclast has been good to Ooh. you, witch. And we do want to be a little careful, because she's going to start throwing out a bunch of stuff. 
and it's kind of scary with 0% resist. Pretty much everything in the game is kind of scary with 0% resist. What are S tier starters? Uh, currently it's Bladefall, Blade Blast, Mines, Minions. Alright, here we get the keys. I'm gonna buy a leather belt. She doesn't sell a leather belt. I'm in a lot of pain. I'm gonna grab just a two stone ring and probably another two stone ring. We're gonna grab flame ability. Flame ability is pretty cool. There we go. Alright, we're fine. We don't need a vendor because we've got like 99% of our inventory like unreserved. I don't need another blue 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 as well. Might as well shot this. What time do you craft MS on boots? You get the MS craft from Act 2. Uh, what is the zone called? The pyramid? No, it's a cavern, sorry, not the pyramid. Uh, right at the waypoint. Like right at the waypoint, you can uh, you can get the MS craft and you can do it like after Vol like Vol over soul. Have I begun the destroyed macro strats? I don't know what that is, Chip. Oop, grab the waypoint here. Uh, here we grab all the busts because we obviously need all the skill points. I'm going to grab the gold amulet. It's going to be useful for a little while. Just because a little bit of rarity means more rare items, which means more uh, currency for us. Could also mean that we can ID a pretty cool item if something upgrades to like a rare and it's like pretty good. That would be nice. Like a rare leather belt would be sick. Actually, really close to level 24, which is really good. It means that we get to go to docks first. And if we're 24, by the time we complete the trial coming up, we can actually look for a four link of the vendor. That skip is hard to get on the first try, the one over the the sewers or whatever. Oh, another quick silver. Uh, I find that it's pretty easy if you have smoke mine on a type of the moving. Uh, here I'm looking for an actual chest piece. I think a chest piece would be pretty cool to equip. Uh, I might equip this one. Like, we don't equip a chest piece earlier because it slows us down by 3% movement speed, as I believe I mentioned earlier. However, I'm looking for one now just because uh, I just want the stats. I want to be alive. If you didn't care though, you could just not bother. Like, 15 life isn't too huge, but it's nice. 15 lightning res is very big though, considering we have very, very little. Ooh, especially if we get cursed of any kind. Cold res is actually kind of important in this zone. So we're level 24, which means we can look for a 4 link. We're looking for a 2b2g, or like a 3b1g, both of which are good. Here if you have extra transmutes, you can craft resist um, in your hideout. So we find a 3b1g, we don't need that. We actually do need the, the 2 green, 1 blue. So here I opt the vendor. We go to hideout, and this is where you'd craft resist if you had any. We don't, so we're good. Can I sell boots with the Quicksilver to upgrade it? Yes, I can. However, I don't have an augment, so I can't upgrade it. Uh, we get the life nodes. I'm feeling pretty confident now. Uh, I think it's going to be down here. If I read this correctly, I'll be very happy. Whew, I'm very happy. What's a qualifying Act 5 time? So you have to get Act 5 with all your skill points in Normal Lab in under 2 hours. And then it has to be one of the top 35 times, but... The last race, there weren't too many people that, uh... I think there were like a few slots open by the very end of it. Here we get to go docks first because we're level 24 already, which means that we're not really losing out on any XP. If you're just barely 23, I would recommend going to Solaris. If you're about to hit 24, it's fine to go docks. So that's the way the XP threshold works out. We're actually close to 25. It's okay to full clear docks as well. Um, if you don't read docks perfectly, there's no real like tell for docks other than like recognizing what kind of layout you're in. but I would recommend just sweeping from one side to the other because at every little end of the piers there's always a magic pack. So there is a magic pack, you'll see a magic pack right here. So I am perfectly A-OK -okay with misreading this zone like 99% of the time. Like I didn't get it already, technically I could have gotten it, but I just, I don't care because I get way more XP. More XP makes the run feel a lot safer, makes the run go smoother, so there's a magic pack. And obviously you can have magic packs in just like normal places like that, you know. If we do want to do resist crafts, it's probably best that we do it on the wand. They found it here. I'm going to go back to town. I'm going to wait till I have two transmutes to go do wand crafts on both my wands. That way I'm not coming back to my hideout twice, and it shouldn't be necessary. So we actually portal out of docks because it's very, very close to the waypoint. But if you don't have a bunch of portals, because you will need these later on, then we will just probably... Oh, I need alterations, actually. I'm dying for some, uh, some rare items. A bit of biffo, if you know what I'm saying. 
But yeah, we're gonna want to pick up pretty much every single rare item, no matter what, throughout the entire run. Until around, like, the end of Act 3, Act 4, somewhere around there. I actually do want to kill this, but I'm not sure why. I don't know. Just seemed tempting to me. That's actually a rogue exile, so we're gonna want to kill this. It would have been nice if this ghost infected it, actually. This volatile scaring me, dude. I don't like that. Just stone. Oop, that is a lot of rare items. Hopefully find some upgrade here. It's not really much of an upgrade. In fact, I think that might actually be a downgrade. 26 already? That's huge XP. It's like really, really high XP. Like unnecessarily high. But we wanted all those rare items because now we can go back, we can vendor, and get pretty large. Usually gets oh we actually check for a skip right here, we can get it, that's fine. These boots are actually pretty incredible. 23 life and tri res. You can wear these if you're a little bit more afraid. I'm gonna opt with these ones because they're 15% MS. We should actually get a skip here, but only if you stand specifically on this tile. Or is it this tile? It's that tile. And then we're gonna grab the Jade Amulet. And then we're gonna go back to town just to vendor really quick. We leveled up so we can look for a four link. This isn't mandatory. The reason why we do this though is just because I really want to uh, clear out my inventory because we don't vendor for quite a while. Um, we're gonna look for a four link. I see two green, one blue. I'm not seeing a four link anywhere. Unless I'm just blind. We're gonna equip flammability. Never mind, I don't have the space for it. I'll just go back to sewers. Your goal is sub 5 hours, nice. Hopefully this uh, VOD can help you out then. Holy Dominion is such a nice node because it gives us all res, which you kind of need. This is a boss where you really want a lot of fire res. We've got two alterations, one transmute. Then I need a bit more, I think, because I need Desecrate. And I need probably Control Destruction. I guess that's, that's probably good enough, actually, now that I think about it. So here we're going to take this fight a little bit further away because we're cursed with flammability, putting our resist very, very low. And we're just going to want to kind of kite him out. Obviously we do want the Orba Storms to hit him. Like this. But I'm just very scared of getting hit with such low resist. I have like a billion chromes, so I don't really need that many more. At this point we don't need to loot nearly as many items because we're nearing just the threshold of how much currency we need in the run. The only other consideration, I guess, would be uh, getting like faster casting in space I find a second four link, but that's not very likely. Very nice. There's a second transmute. I'm really hoping to find a leather belt in my lifetime. A leather belt plus either an alchemy or an essence, like a resist essence, would be really, really cool to find. If it's not a resist essence, I would actually probably be perfectly fine with uh, just using like a physical essence. Oh, that's a crew reward. That's pretty incredible. All right, so extra movement speed. Vectal damage as well. So we only want to be like 27 on like piety, but uh, being 27 here is just going to mean that we're a lot higher in XP basically. <clears throat> when do I ofi? Right now, dude. Right now. You need a master nightmare. So pathing through Lunaris 2 can be a bit interesting because our nice little lady friends here can be a little scary. However, they kind of lock onto a position and then you can run away from them afterwards. So you'll see that they lock on, we flame dash over them. You'll see that these lock on, we flame dash over them. Whoa. That locks onto that location. And they'll reposition obviously a bit. So long as you're like running through, you'll be perfectly safe. So that locks on, we just run past. If you start hesitating, you're probably going to die here. And this can be a very easy zone to die in. At the very end of these stairs, there's a side with one cart and a side with two carts. So we always go on the side with one cart. You can see that there's one cart there on the left, so we go to the left. Might actually be very close to 28 on Piety, which makes our XP pretty cool. Chip, I'm not missing any gem, right? I just need Herald of Ash, which I've already got. Uh, Wave of Conviction, which I've already got, and then from Act 2 I need Control Destruction, and I need uh, Desecrate as well. Those are the only two things I think I need, if I'm not mistaken. Conquered, you had to I hope so. Such power wasted on Those are like the four gems we need, and we've got a decent amount of them already. I actually want to upgrade my Mana Flask if possible. And I want to craft Resist, which does slow down the time, but it means that we're alive which being alive is pretty cool. I would love to have flammability actually. Flammability adds a huge amount of damage. 
especially once we use um, our fire skills in about five seconds from now. I'm gonna try to ID something. I don't have the whetstones for it or the scrolls for it, but I do have this whetstone. I sell the whetstone. Oh, I didn't have to ID that. Oh, they actually ended up really well. Um, I'm gonna sell this stuff then. I don't need it. Yeah, I definitely don't need this stuff. Uh, we actually purchase Armageddon brand, and then we're gonna check for Link just really quick. There's a 3D, 1G. I also want a leather belt if I can find that. I'm gonna sell this. Oh, that costed a transmute though, unfortunately. Grab a high life one. This obviously slows down our time by quite a bit. I guess I don't need this chrome item anyway anymore. And we grab cremation. I go back to act two. How's my resist looking? Probably not very good. Yeah, it's not very good. But I'm gonna get uh, faster casting, desecrate, control destruction. I'm just gonna craft res really quick on one of the ones because I really want a lot of cold res because this next zone is very scary for cold res. Our receptor is terrifying. Your small brain can't go under six hours to maps. You lose a lot of time because you don't know how to traverse layouts. I would bet that that's not entirely true. Just because even though you'll end up getting backtracked a lot, if you read every zone perfectly, you wouldn't be able to manage your XP very well. Relative to like what racers can do. But because of that, I never recommend people learn like layouts and stuff like that. Here we're gonna replace the Orbistorm setup. Oop. So we're actually gonna go combustion, onslaught, faster casting, and Armageddon brand. Also throw in flammability over here. It's kinda hard to single target set up that. I need to throw in Desecrate somewhere, so I'm gonna probably drop the uh, Stormbust Mine. Put in Desecrate on a Q. Move this over to R. Basically, we're just getting ready for the swap over here. And we're gonna go Armageddon Brand, Combustion, Faster Casting, and Onslaught. Faster Casting is completely optional, by the way. It's just because I've got this four link. I was hoping for a four link single target setup because then it feels really, really good. But that's fine. We're gonna go Cremation, uh, LMP. I'm going over here. And then we're also going to go controlled. LA focus wouldn't be too bad here either. I think that's in my helm at the moment though. Yeah, let's do LA focus. Uh, yeah, I think LA focus is probably better. And we'll make sure that our auras are on. Make sure that there's nothing, no like supports attached to that. And at this point, we just kind of zoom. We've got every bit of currency we need. Maybe some like resist crafts, maybe some like essences to take things like rare. But other than that, we just zoom on through. The time's not very amazing, but it gets the job done. Also, we need flame wall. The so flame wall needs to go over there, and perfect, it's slotted. Everything's slotted into where it needs to be. Just gonna make sure these are on attack without moving. The functionality feel a bit better. Oh, that's way too far, actually. I don't want to go into those proximity shields. A bit too scary for me. Boop. Up. Well, okay, there we go. And at this point I'm not dying for like rare items or anything. You can also skip through some of the, the holes in the walls here, like you just saw right there. Did I do the Jardin Trial? I did not do the Jardin Trial. You're right, I forgot that. I was too focused on the swap that I was about to get. Balloons, Tower Defense, Battles 2 will be an eSport. That's pretty cool. I'm gonna get life just to be a bit safer, but I would like to get damage instead. Because this is a really good node. Two B one G helm. Two B one G helm. I need more. Oh, like much is gonna be my current helm. I want this guy to come over here. This mob is scarier than the other two mobs that he gives, just because he gives a uh, haste to any mob that's alive still. So the actual like combination of spells is kind of like a Street Fighter combo. It feels a bit weird to get used to. Because he placed down Armageddon Brand, and then he placed down Cremation or Desecrate. He placed down three different Cremations. He placed down Flame Wall. Then he Flame Dash over the boss and only dot up the boss, but also to proc Arcane Surge. And then you use Wave of Conviction, and then you Flame Ability, and then you kind of like repeat that all over again. So I'll show you. Three different Cremations, a couple Flame Walls, Flame Dash over. And then we repeat that all over again. And we actually don't need any items at this point on. And you see the single target's pretty good. 
Maybe you don't miss in 50 minutes with 100% of the game completed. We're also almost level 29, which is good. The very last XP check, so we definitely want to be 27 on Piety, at least. We want to be at least 28 on Dom, at least. And then leaving Dried Lake, we would like to be level 30. But in this kind of a run, you could technically be like 29 and a half, which is exactly where we're going to end at. The reasoning for that is just because we're going to go do Lab. Lab will give us a little bit of XP. Um, Act 4 is a little weird in that the XP progression, like it progresses through the zones very fast. So it goes from like 33 to 34 to 35 like very quickly. And it's like 37. The only way to counteract that is by being close to like level 32. This is because every level that you get puts you closer to the zone level. Meaning that you'll gain uh, more XP if the zone is like if the zone is too high level for you, then you won't gain very much XP. So we try to stay within like this threshold of of, of levels. So this is three levels away from the zone plus one for every sixteen levels, and you can see how being level thirty two is pretty important for that because it pushes up us up over that breakpoint that we need. So we essentially close the gap between us and the zone level by two, and so that's why I like to be like level thirty here. Again, we're going to do the little smoke line or flame dash trick away from that. I don't really need much currency, so I'm not going to bother picking up many items at this point. I should technically use my Act 5 filter for this instead, but it's fine. It's whatever. Let's see where is this? Oh, this is with my uh, resist flask, isn't it? Alright, so I basically just want like fire and cold res to be maxed out. And I would love to have a better mana flask. That's like the only other thing I'm looking for in this run. The only other thing I want to pick up in this run. But I guess I'll take other stuff. Alright. Can I do mana based leveling for the new league? You mean like some sort of, um, I don't know, like agnostic build or something? Mm, maybe. I thought of doing like a Hierophant Ball Miner or Ball Lightning self cast. Potentially. I don't think it's an S tier starter, but I think it's pretty good. Here we click on these little Soul Fight nodes, hoping for 10 alterations. That would kind of like guarantee adrenaline on our Quicksilver. But. Not mandatory and not very likely either. Also takes some time because you got to turn in the card. Uh, let's be a little careful here. I think it's gonna be over this way actually. The more I think about it, I guess it connects from here anyways. Nico, you're cool. Do a ball lightning hierophant, please, 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 please. I think hierophant would be a better starter than uh, going ascendant. The only hesitation I have with doing that kind of a run. Okay, so here we make sure we find Desperate Spirit. If you don't find Desperate Spirit, you can place a portal at the end of the zone. But my only hesitation with doing a run like that, let's see if we have a skip. I think it's a bit too far for me to skip. Is that uh, I think that the whole like mom playstyle might be getting a nerf just because the economy builds popularity is pretty correct. Here we click on the strong box, we dash away, get a little bit more XP, we're level like almost 31. Which is perfect. We want to be 31 going into lab because if you have any gems that are level 12 or any gems that are level 28, those both level up at this point. So say you're doing like Toxic Rain, they will level up at 31. I guess Toxic Rain's a little different because almost all the uh, almost all the Ranger Ascendancy points are very valuable. So you try to do an early lab on that just because you'll gain a lot of speed from doing lab early. So you do it at like 28 as a Ranger. But here we're gonna go ahead and do lab. I forgot to grab the uh, the Imperial Jardins waypoint actually by mistake, or the trial. But yeah, we're gonna go grab that really quick. Uh, we have to portal out because remember what I said earlier about logging out. Oh, we need to grab the fire res uh, node, and then we're gonna go for explosive impacts. So actually, I do want to log out because I want one more passive point, so I can get explosive impact for lab. Is this strictly for leveling as fast as possible, or do you switch to something else once you hit maps? Um, I've played this to maps a few times, and then gone uh, like an Ignite Armageddon brand with like Flame Wall, and it's been pretty good. It like carried my League Starter, and I was like pretty well off for the first few days. But the uh, the build might see a nerf or something. The methodology is pretty much the same, though, no matter what you do. So here we check Pee Wee Lab. This very first room will always be the same, by the way. So you never have to mess this part up. Like this very first part of the layout, like is always, always, always gonna look like this. So there's no reason for you to get confused and go the wrong way. You should be able to run through this pretty perfectly. I'm lagging really badly. 
I don't know if it's PV lab or what, but yeah, we're gonna pull up normal lab because we don't know what kind of split we have to do after the first part. I guess I can ID that. Oop. So no augmentation, that's kind of surprising. Yeah, we don't care about the lab mechanics too much. Because it just kind of goes down really quickly. And we don't care about loot, so I'm just going to disable these if I have the opportunity to. The next one's idols. That one definitely won't have enough time to raise up. Raider looks good for Archmage things. Uh, not really. It's a little too far away from the tree, in my opinion. Sure, endgame, but not for like any sort of speed leveling. We don't need to grab the thing to help us out with most of these mechanics, just because it's normal lab, it's not very difficult. Also, I'm not sure if this is the right way to go. Okay, thank goodness. I like 50 50 it and didn't actually check if it was top right. Oopies. I would love to actually get a better mana plus, so I might just buy that for like a transmute here. So I'll sell the transmute, which will give me four scrolls, and then I'll buy a better mana plus because I am in dire need of one. It's gonna make my single target really weird on some of these later bosses, for sure. And you still need to keep an eye out for him, because he can still do stuff. Alright, so this top left and top right's gonna be faster. I'm gonna trust it. My target is higher for an arc. Yeah, I think that's probably a good idea. So long as uh, the mom plays on doesn't get nerfed. Here you need to check your fire res. If you've got cap fire res, you can walk over this. So I have cap fire res with my flask. You can walk over this with a flask, as you can see. We're not losing HP. However, if your res isn't capped, then uh, you shouldn't do this at all. And you should also be wary of the little spike trap things, those things right there. Whoa! We got frozen on top of the trap. That was actually kind of terrifying. Right, we're just going to run our way through. Go whichever way Suicide Small says is faster. Thank you, Suicide Small. And if you struggle with lab layouts, you can just farm lab for a few days and you will very quickly learn a lot of these layouts. Uh, so it's not that way actually, that's the way left, weirdly enough. Okay, we gotta go this way to go to the top right. Strange, but... And as you can see, we're level 32, which is perfect. It means that we can enter level 38 zones. Well, level 37 with zones without any penalty. And then we lose a very small amount of XP in level 38 zones. So our XP is beautiful, it is exactly where we want it. At this point we can get AoE, we can get life, we can kind of get whatever you need. I'm going to offer a little bit of AoE. I might refund, I should refund this 10 dex node right here. But there's not too much time for me to, uh, to dilly dally. We're going to go Elementalist and we're going to take the Elemental Exposure node. Because our Wave of Conviction applies Exposure. I'm gonna sell this stuff over here. I'm gonna look for a better mana flask. Hopefully I find one. A level 30 flask is kind of meh. I'm gonna do level 24 one. Perfect. And now I don't have to worry about anything else. Also, we got an augmentation, which means that we could make 20 MS boots. Uh, it would take too long, I think. Did I get the resist enchant? No, I didn't. I get the resist uh, flask right here. When's the next league start? I think it's like April 16th. Like I said, we're level 32, which is pretty good for XP, so we're going to do some cage skips here. I think this might be a 1 or 2 skip layout. I don't know why I feel so scared of doing those now. I think I've just messed them up so many times trying to like speed demon my way, my way through them. Okay, I might hold on to another charge, but I don't think I get one more here. Now that I think about it, oh, I was too early. I thought for sure this would be a dead end, though. Oh, I was wrong. Yeah, no, I didn't get another one. I wish you could skip this boss fight, but you can't. The little gate at the end is just empty. Yeah, you can see my mana flask is fine now. At this point, if you wanted to play very safe, you could actually spec into Mind Over Matter. I mean, you could do this sooner. But you could spec into Mind Over Matter and drop, like, one or two of the auras for, like, running through the X. You can definitely do that during, like, actual speedruns. Like, during races, I mean. But for speedrunning and getting a VOD submission, I mean, if you die, you can just go again. Technically, by doing these, you shouldn't even have, like, life nodes in. But we take them anyways, just because it makes us a lot safer. Um, makes it a lot more consistent, so. Don't forget Firewalker. We already got Firewalker. Thank you, though. Here we flame dash immediately upon entering the zone. 
so that we can uh, kill all of those uh, unique mobs because they'll stack on top of each other. Because one of the dudes, one of those elites or unique mobs or whatever you want to call them, he will like leap slam immediately and we want him to leap slam on top of the other dudes. Here we just have to watch out for the swords on the ground and other than that we don't have to worry too much. And again the combo is Armageddon Brand placed on cremation, or sorry, placed on desecrate, placed on three different cremations, uh, two different flame walls, cast uh, flame ability at some point, make sure that's on him at all times, and then we wave a conviction, and then we repeat that all over again. And it's pretty much a single target and everything. Don't forget the flame dash over him to proc some extra damage, as well as get arcane surge. We could turn this item in, which gives us a little bit more space, but again, this is an act 5 speed run. We don't care about space. Okay, I don't... I, I don't know. Alright. But, uh... We don't care about space, so we're just gonna keep it in our inventory. It's not ethical how fast I am. I think this run's kinda slow for an everything done run, but... How's the Bastion practice going for Minecraft? Uh, pretty bad, actually. Pretty bad. I was only really able to loot one of them efficiently, and even then I didn't do the trading very efficiently. I wasn't able to, like, group the piglins very well. Yo, there's these, like, one mobs called, like, Piglin Brutes. They don't care, dude. They don't care about gold at all. They just run at me, break my shield, and I'm like... What the heck, man? I was, uh, introduced to them for the very first time. Uh, last night, actually. Don't play on the latest version? I wasn't doing speedruns on the latest version. My, uh, friend invited me to play Minecraft on the server. Uh, we didn't get a skip here, which I would have liked to have shown, but... Basically, you get right up close to the waterfall, like the top right corner, and you just, just smoke mine right up it. You can't use flame dash up it, though, unfortunately. 1.16.1, there aren't any brutes. Dude, those brutes are scary, man. They actually, like, ruin speedrunning. Well, they ruined my speedrun. I had to go really slow through the Bastion, and I wasn't able to get the... I wasn't able to get the chest at the very bottom of one of the, uh, the bridge layouts, which made me kind of sad, because I like going for that usually. But then there were like six brutes just right there at the bottom, and I was like, well, I remember what one brute did to me. I'm not doing that. The Minecraft was pretty fun. Just chilling out. I don't know if I'll play more. I've got a lot of homework. I was able to finish quite a bit of it, though. Yeah, not too much to talk about. Um, we'll just make sure that we've, uh, we're have we not getting like slapped by any giant attack that we shouldn't be. And you can see that the damage is giga unethical. If you need a vendor, you actually log out to talk to the vendor right there, but if you want a faster way through, you actually portal out, because portaling out puts you right next to the waypoint, kind of like an X3. That's why we like portal out of docks earlier. At this point, because we've got a lot of XP, a lot of passive points, um, it's kind of up to you what you want to do. If you want to go for cast speed nodes, go for it. If you want to go for more life, go for it. I think I'm going to showcase more life just to guarantee that I don't get a uh, one tapped in this run because I'm pretty happy with the commentary, and although the run can definitely be faster, you know, you get, like, Adrenaline or something. Ooh, I think this wouldn't be too bad to use on, like, a two-stone ring. I always mess this one, this particular layout up. But I'm just gonna skip over it. I'm feeling pretty okay with my stuff. You can only go into this with far less res and far less health. It's just scarier. There's a few zones in particular that are very scary, and a few bosses in particular that are very scary, namely, like, Piety coming up. Mighty coming up is one of the scarier bosses, for sure. But we want to not get hit by her. It's a weird looking layout. Mm -hmm. but yes, I think I will go for a little bit more life nodes. Uh, it might be too early to turn. Or, unless... Oh, it's a different kind of layout than what I thought it was. Oh my. Here you can get punctured and fall over very quickly if you're not careful, so we try to like dash over these uh, these mobs as soon as possible. Be happy for me. Uh, I'd probably grab these like nodes actually instead. We get to erase our face. Pretty nice. And we want to stay as far away from Piety as possible, and we don't want to get beamed. Getting beamed would spell game over for us. Want to be pretty careful about that. If I had transmutes, I could actually transmute like the light flasks or something. It's pretty rare that I ever hit 36 in these runs, but I guess it's gonna happen because I've just got a lot of XP going into this. What's up, Trix? Noted. You guys taking notes? It seems I've underestimated and we don't really need scrolls of wisdoms 
because again we're not really IDing stuff we don't need currency here you throw a smoke mine up there grab the waypoint then you detonate it and you can jump over these little things little barriers if you will Dodri is actually kind of scary because we're going to stand in vulnerability and we're in a cursor she actually eats the curse and gains in holy might which makes her a lot stronger so you want to be a bit careful I might hold on to a couple portal scrolls so I might log out on this next one just so I have a few just in case things get a bit scary later on. So here we go to Malajaro. To kill for. And you can see that the damage is completely unethical. Um, we'll pretty much never hit 42 in this run unless you specifically farm Chamber of Innocence. However, this run does not require Chamber of Innocence. It doesn't even require to be good on XP, but it just kind of naturally happens, uh, especially when you tend to blast off. I'm going to be a little careful these books just because I don't have very great resists. And again, I'm going to log out to conserve one, one portal scroll. I'm going to go back here. I'm going to go through here. And I actually want this little node over here, so I'm going to take that. Let's check my resists. They're not very good. But that's fine. I don't really have any trains made for them. I actually have way too many chromes, is the funny part. I picked up one too many chrome items and not enough of other stuff. Here we want to place Malachi as far away as possible. Just to make our lives a little bit easier. Uh, it's like some weird stuff like with his animations. And now we go over to his side of the arena to force him to do the little bat attack. And then we go back over to the piety side. And we don't want him to do the, the weird attack. We stand like as far away as possible. And he won't do it. Just like that. Uh, so the Jawland event uh, ended in that you can't get like prizes anymore and stuff. I'm actually out of mana, so I might portal out. This is like an example of when I said I need portals. Yeah, you can just play it for fun if you'd like. Uh, it's kind of unfortunate timing of that. I'm gonna prep the uh, the heart here, and it'll go down really quickly. So we just prep wherever he's going next. And here. He will actually teleport to your current location, so he'll go down and then teleport to your current location. So you'll notice that I placed down all of this stuff on the ground. I place all this, like, cremation stuff on the ground, but we want to bring them as close as possible to that. And you can see that we just pop off right there. Can I not say fun ever again? Sorry, dude. My bad. Here, if the run was going longer, you would take the, uh... Not combustion, but whatever the other ignite thing is, it like adds some flat damage for like getting ignite, for like igniting a mob, Fusing. and that would be pretty good. Um, this is one of the scariest zones in the speed run. We don't have to worry about it because we've got an insane amount of life at this point for an Act Five speed run. We're playing it Omega safe, but these little flicker strike mobs can follow you for quite a while. If you get like a sub fizz or like a haste aura, then you're in a lot of danger. It's Immolate? Yes, it's called Immolate. Ignite Prolif is also good. So there's a Silver Flask coming up in Act 5. We don't use it just because um, we don't need to. The run doesn't go on long enough for it to get really a lot of value out of it. I'm oh, careful. But if the run was going any bit longer, I would take uh, Ignite Proliferation, um, the uh, Immolate. So I'd use Armageddon Brand. Combustion, Ignite Proliferation, and Immolate, and that would be like my endgame links, and then you can throw on some other stuff. We don't use Swift Brand, Swift Brand's a bait because we don't need to activate as fast as possible. Let's see what our resists are. Um, I guess this is just going to be good. Literally any two stone ring will do. I'll go for like Fire and Lightning, I guess. Uh, um, so that literally rolled with like no stats on it. There you go. I'm Exile killed Katava in 104. Yeah, that's the current world record. A pretty good run, dude. Can't be beaten unless you reset a thousand times, so I'm not gonna bother. I've got other stuff to do, like school related stuff. I've got better uses of my time. I'm okay being like one minute slower, despite how large of a gap that is. Let's see what this is. A Hatred Essence. I actually wouldn't mind doing that, but at this point, we just kinda go, go, go. Grab the my as meter. And you can actually hop up and down these little things. You can see that there's like little holes in the wall. 
but you can hop over like that one at the very end there. Only you can hop over this one. Skip two zones. That's pretty cool. We need the Maya's meter because we need the uh, the scope point, obviously. You could go back and get the silver flask and the whoa 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 and the skill point here, but we don't do that because we're just worried about speed. How do I not bonk into walls all the time? No, I'm just careful not to hit my head into a wall. Although I do it in real life so often, unfortunately. Let's see if this belt's any good. Just idea. 17 yes, that's crazy, dude. And at this point, we only care about killing mobs to keep up our quicksilver flask. That's the only thing we care about killing mobs for. Like magic packs, we'll put down like a couple Armageddon brands and we'll just kind of zoom on through. One of the biggest differences in Excel's world record and my world record was how well Excel manages flasks and how many mobs he kills by the end of the run. I ended up killing way too many mobs and I know it. Because there are certain parts of the run where I'll like blast. Okay, I have to be careful because these could actually kill me. And then I gotta be careful not to click on the ritual. Trans. Transmute, again, you could go back and craft resist, but why? We're worried about speed, violence, momentum. See, like right there, I could have not killed any monsters for like another 10 seconds or so, and then used the level up to refresh all my flasks. That way I would have better uses of flasks. I need spear gems. I should use an act 5 filter, but oh well, it's fine. What movement do I swap to Armageddon Brand slash cremation? What moment? Uh, level. 28 as soon as you can use it and we're just literally getting all the life because I mean bad but we don't need XP we're level 37 which is about the highest that you need to be in this run usually act 5 world records will be 35 if you're 31 it feels pretty bad I'm gonna be honest we're actually kind of dying so I'm gonna go back really quick holy moly I'm gonna sell the alteration I'm gonna sell the alteration and this stuff and this so I can purchase more uh Portal scrolls. Remember, Holy moly. Excel said that he followed my videos first. I created a monster. Wet. I mean, I've always said that I wanted people to get into racing and to realize just how easy it is to be a top level racer. Because you'll do like one run and you'll realize just how much improvement can be made. And then you'll get addicted to the improvement and it'll, it'll just flow very naturally. As long as you practice and you put your heart in the right place and your intent on getting better, it is your progression will be very rapid, especially at first. It's the same with literally anything you do though. You put your mind to it. You start an abyss and you're not that good at racing. I think that duration of time is one of the worst methodologies of determining how good something is. You can be in a relationship for three years and it can be the most toxic relationship in the world, but people will tell you that um, it's a good relationship, otherwise why else would it have lasted for three years? You know, even if secretly your partner is like threatening like you or themselves and no one else knows that, people will say like, oh, it's a good relationship. You must really like each other, huh? You know, you can... Uh, you can, you can practice an instrument for 10 years and you can do it very lazily or you can be very disciplined and practice your instrument every single day and be way better, you know? You're trying every day but you still can't suck your- oh, yep, nice. This is about easy because it requires a lot of time. Well, I mean, if you're intent on becoming one of the best racers in the world, yes, it requires a lot of time. If you're content with uh, being pretty good at racing, you literally just have to watch one VOD, like this one for example, and then you, maybe you do like one or two runs and you're like, oh that's how I improve, and then you improve from there. The really big aha moment that I had was watching Dead and Doom play and realizing that transmutes and alterations were actually like essential pieces of currency in speedrunning. And once that happened, like the whole campaign just kind of like clicked together for me. I didn't, I wasn't, I wasn't fast, but I mean, it was alright. And we don't need loot, so we're just gonna continue on. She had constant stretching. Yeah, stretching is pretty good. Do you ride your bike to work every day? You're not in shape for the Tour de France. That's a good analogy. I like that one, actually. But yeah, it's the same thing. I mean, like, when I had a bike before it got, uh, st oh my. Before it got, uh, stolen, I actually would, like, bike pretty hard wherever I went. 
I noticed people would like bike on the sidewalk everywhere. So the reason why I went over here knowing it's a dead end is because there's a little, whoa, little window that I can hop on, whoa, <laughs> hop on through. <laughs> We're having some close calls. This is one of the other scarier zones. There's a lot of scary mobs in here, so. This is where like phasing would really help out, but we don't have that, so. <laughs> Not taking those life nodes would have meant that I'd be dead right now, by the way. Taking mine over matter would actually make us a lot safer, but I'm... It used to be a better strat before, like, uh, Herald of Ash was, like, really, really good. Because we're using a fire skill. But here we're going to grab the waypoint, and we're going to go into the ossuary. We're going to grab the thing, then we're going to place a portal at the cathedral rooftop. We're going to continue on to reliquary, then we're going to take the reliquary waypoint after getting everything. So we're going to get all the stuff for the skill point. And then we get our skill point like while in reliquary and then right after that we'll make sure to uh get our skill point oh, i actually don't need to do this arcanist but maybe i can show you guys the thing no never mind it didn't work i was trying to show you guys the thing of me clicking on the thing and then going away i'm gonna conserve one portal here by logging out it loses minuscule time i think it might not actually be a time loss but you know the windows to the walls that's right and I'm already DMCA'd, not making any money off this one. That's right. So careful this bridge. Especially if you're Swedish. And we're gonna place the portal right here at the cathedral rooftops. And we're gonna make kind of like this wide arc going over to Reliquary. And this is pretty standard pathing, uh, provided that you're doing the skill point. Just click faster. Going faster does help. Very fast zoning, you know all the layouts and stuff. But menuing and getting all the gems and items is the problem. Oh, is that what chat's saying? Just click faster for? Um, my recommendation for that is like, imagine you're trying to get good at like StarCraft or like some other competitive game, like League of Legends or Dota, and like what you're supposed to do to improve, because there's so many factors going on, is like really hone in on one things. A lot of people will get focused on their time. They're like, how can I get my time better? And they're like, oh, I got to do these several things. No, what you have to do is focus on getting your menuing really good. And then after you've got your menuing really well, you can do like your passive points stuff really well. I mean, I guess it's sort of included with menuing, but you know, you can get your decision making down. Like there's kind of a priority list. Uh, I think I've answered that somewhere, but I don't know. There's like a bunch of things you can find. Basically, the essentials are like knowing how to manage your inventory, having a plan of what you want to do, and just generally knowing what you're doing is going to be more important than like clicking fast or doing stuff like that, like reading the zone layouts. Okay, so here we're going to get this skill point, and we're going to get this skill point. Yeah, I forget how many skill points I need. I'm going to count them at the end. One hour 17? Well, Katava's not dead yet, so... Uh, what do I get with these points? I mean, I guess I could get resist nodes if I wanted to. Sure, why not? I'll get like the weird plus one max res node. Gives me like 10 max, 10 all res and plus one max. I really just don't know what to do with my passive points, I'm gonna be honest. I could have actually have gone to the like, the way left over here and gotten like devotion. I have so many points to mess around with. I forgot what it was like to like play for this long because I didn't think I'd get to level 39, which is actually not too bad. We would want to farm to like level 40 in Chamber of Innocence if we were to uh, realistically continue the run. Now we'd be like 41, 42 here at Katava, but that's the only difference I would do between this is like a, a VOD for like qualification and like an actual league start in this build. But yeah, I'll probably post the, uh, the gem stuff that you need to know in the description of the video down below. I guess I can just go this weird node over here, because I don't know what else to get. This could work, I guess. Oh, I should have gotten the movement speed node, actually. I forgot about precision, which would have been cool, because it's like 5% MS and 6% cast speed. It's actually a cool node. You're supposed to take it during uh, like world record stuff. It's actually way better than taking these two nodes over here. So that was a minor mistake on my part, but that's okay. It's not going to end up being too big of a deal. When he closes his hand, you want to flame dash as far away as possible or smoke mine as far away as possible. And make sure you don't get hit by one of the things because you can very easily get bopped. Here we want to kill the heart as fast as possible and avoid getting hit by any sort of slam. We're going to wait a second and then basically like pre-trap everything up. 
and then we focus mostly on dodging, and you'll see that Catalva usually goes down with maybe one animation going out. And here it's very important that you just spam Wave of Conviction and just dodge around so we don't get hit by any sort of the Herald projectile then. Spiritual Aid, yeah, Spiritual Aid would affect us. Um, a really good node would be like the damage nodes on the left hand side. What are these called? Divine Judgment is insane. Yeah, Divine Judgment would be good. But it's, so, it's too many points, you can't really get it in this kind of a run. Yeah, I wouldn't have taken these three nodes and I would have gotten either Precision or gone over to like Devotion. But I could type slash, that's not how you type slash des. Slash des, obviously zero. Slash passives, so we've got uh, Dweller, uh, Fair Graves, The Way Forward, Vicario's Secret, Piety's Pets, uh, Indomitable Spirit, uh, and then both of the Act 5 ones. And oh, I was supposed to talk my timer as soon as I got the resist message, but 